Hey everyone, welcome back to my workbench. Um, so I made the, I wouldn't call it a mistake, but I decided to put up a photo of a, this of this little guy onto the Atari Age forum over on uh, Facebook. And I went from, I'd sold two of these already to selling, I think I'm up to like 10 now. So thank you everyone for ordering, but I got myself in a situation I didn't quite expect. I only ordered parts for, for four of them so far. Um, so I went through and I've been doing all the CNC cutting. It was all done for the tops. Uh, right now I'm working on soldering up the uh, keypads to install later. And I went and had to order. I had a bunch of parts in order already just in case this blew up. But what happened was it blew up more than I ever expected. So, uh, yeah, I ordered. I know I already had joysticks in order, so I had to order even more joysticks. And, oh, this is the secret to this, this is a secret sauce right here. Um, the original potentiometer was taken off, and a new uh, one meg potentiometer with a 100 nanofarad cap over the uh, wiper and in uh, one of the sides of the resistor are put on here. And that emulates a full 500k pot, uh, according to the uh, 5200 so yeah so these are all glue I have to peel off this is a custom 3d printed part and then I have spacers for 3d printed parts I have these little brackets here for holding the, uh, the new potentiometer up these are spacers for the, the front panel buttons and of course I Printed out a bunch of the um, knobs as well. Yeah. Yeah. Yikes! A bunch of these 5200 style uh, knobs here to go over the joystick because it's just when they come to me, there is just they're just a little stubby tab like this, and this I'm not gonna. It's got kind of an interference fit, so I'm not gonna jam it on there right now because I want to be able to put just a little glue in there first um i also have a sander buffer coming in so i can buff and sand these out just a little bit uh, so that's coming in too so i really didn't expect so many orders so quickly it's just like startling i didn't know there was such demand for the analog uh 5200 controller so yeah this is the secret this is the you pry that off and take it run. You run um got a little bracket here that goes goes on here for the pot. And that goes into there. And this gets all mounted in the housing. And I actually hook up the 5200 live and then I adjust this until I get the reading I want and then Kind of lock it down and all in the place and that's how you get the uh calibration on it so this is actually i designed these with a long uh because the one pot ends up on top of one of these guys and it ends up this for the uh x y so it's actually pretty close to being flush there but the one that's over for the uh the y axis um is this guy here and you actually have to be able to, uh, it has to extend, actually goes around like this. It extends down so it actually meets the surface. Because there's a spacer, the, that little red space from before, actually goes in here. Showing you all my secrets here. Not that I'm too worried about because it, unless you have a nice 3D printer. Um, it's not going to be very easy for you to, to copy effectively. I mean, I suppose you could if you want to. 
there. This goes pops through the top of a housing and they run new screws down through it. There's a cap that goes over this and it sits in the system like this. So you get your uh, your X and your Y potentiometer and this just like this is totally uncentered correctly. It has a slight interference fit, but not much. And it just, that's how you get your, your true analog right there. Because it really is an analog, all analog components. There's no, uh, there's no digital components. And the nice thing is, um, the, uh, I haven't seen much drift yet on it. So that's a good sign. There might be some in the future, but I don't know. It seems like it's pretty solid. These are little industrial joysticks here with a nice centering. And I've opened these up. There's actually um, two sets of extension springs in here that extend, and that's what gives you the snap. So you get a nice snappy self-centering joystick. And the se another secret is using a strong but flexible adhesive here. So if there's any misalignment, it can ride in there I, I mean i usually put just a tiny bit of adhesive in here but you actually don't need much because i made it uh, more or less an interference fit on there so but i do a little dab and, uh, yeah but these have been setting for 24 hours now so they're nice and solid on there i do a little soldering now so yeah like this keypad's pretty close to the original 5200, close enough that I will be able to uh, go ahead and see from the back side here. It's actually pretty darn close, so I'm going to have it kind of centered slightly off. You won't see it, but uh, I've had a couple requests for having overlays, and I think the guys from the Atari 5200 podcast requested to have theirs uh, with a custom uh, 3D printed part so it'll be uh, uh, you can use the overlay so I might include that in version 1.1 of these I'll see but I might have to raise the cost of it because that's going to be a pretty complicated part to print uh, and I mean it's going to have to be basically that big so it's a big part to design and print so for now to keep the original price but if i have a version that has the inlays then I'll, I'll probably have to add like 10 bucks to it because it's just a bit more work on my end to uh integrate that uh, so yeah so this is keypad uh, i mean the controller itself isn't terribly complicated internally is it i mean the 15 pin connector uh and i gotta look at my wiring diagram red just first okay so there is a um, it's more or less a 50 it's a 15 pin cable only 14 conductors are being used so um i just ordered i think a hundred feet of uh 16 conductor cable which should keep me going a while because all i had on hand is a 25 conductor or 26 conductor i can't remember what it is but Anyway, way overkill for, uh, because I'll never use more than 14 conductors because you can't. Yeah, the original 5200 had this really weird slider arrangement internally and um, relied 100% on the rubber boot uh, centering the joystick, which is, in my opinion, probably not the best choice because rubber boots tear and uh you don't want to and you the centering was very poor the self center is very poor there's no uh, steel springs like this the joystick i have literally has spring steel coiled springs inside um one of these videos i'll rip them up i'll show you the one i ripped apart so you can see how it looks internally originally i wanted to modify the shaft of the um oh uh, of 
a potentiometer to replace the existing potentiometer. But the problem with that is the material used is like a hardened zinc. And I just, I don't have, I mean, I'd need a lathe to do that. I'm not buying a lathe to turn down potentiometers. And I had a flat on there and it's like, oh my goodness. I am not that dedicated. So I found years and years and years and years ago, I made just two uh, true analog um, 5200 controllers. I ha still have one, uh, and then I sold one, but that actually used a very kind of similar to this, but I actually used the, the original potentiometer for some junk 5200 controller to be the potentiometers on there. And that worked pretty well, but nowhere near. I mean, that was years before uh, I had a 3D printer. 3D printer I've only had like a month. Actually, it's my son's 3D printer he got for Christmas. But daddy's using it as well. Might as well get better uses out of it. Oh yeah, that's uh, that's where it comes from. So with the advent of affordable 3D printing, I can make proper couplers, spacers, and brackets all. And I had a, I've had a CNC milling machine for benchtop one for a couple of years now, uh, which is pretty cool. But I. I mean, it's great if you need to cut your own PC boards and stuff, but I really didn't have my temperature a little low. The issue I ran into um, is yes, you can cut with it, but it's a slow process to reduce all that material down. It's more efficient just to uh, 3D print it up. I didn't strip the blue one. I like uh, this colored, ID, this is called IDC cable. I like it because it's colored and you can see. I've had, I've opened up systems where it's just like, oh my goodness, it's just one black stripe and a bunch of gray. And it's like, oh, that's great. I know what pin number one is. What are the rest of the pins? I don't know. So you have to like manually ohm out every single one of them. Thought my wife is knocking, but it wasn't her. It's just the wind. Um, oh my goodness, it's so cold out today. Oh, the high was I think the high was like minus eight Fahrenheit, which is like what minus twenty three C. This brutal is all get out. Um, I'm gonna finish soldering this. If I were to disappear for a few weeks. Um, my wife is actually going, she was diagnosed with breast cancer back in uh, uh, early August. And it's one of the reasons I have not been on as much. This is the whole 5200 control or something to get my mind off of uh, that. She has one chemo left. And then she has surgery at the end of February, so, which is good. Stay. So, end of February, she has surgery. And then after that, she's got radiation. But. Every time we go, they get they take a look at it, and uh, it's smaller, so it's significantly reduced size. That is right underneath her uh, left armpit, of all things. So, forever like don't respond quickly. Uh, that's my wouldn't say excuse, but probably the reason why I'm not. So I'm giving her help. So. I'm hoping to get this batch of, I think, up to nine controllers. I'll get these four done, and I'll have, like, another five controllers after this um, done before she has surgery. 
Uh, so I'll probably knock these out in the next couple days and send them out to the first customers. And then um, my parts are coming in on the, I think they're said the 25th, maybe earlier than that. So they're in the mail, but they're coming a little slow. They're from China. That's the only way I can make this thing without costing $300 is uh, sourcing them from China, unfortunately. I wish I could say otherwise, but unless you want anyone wants a $350 controller, that's what I got to do. Because if I bought, I mean, I was looking at the price of the same components myself. I mean, just my, my cost of goods would be, it's like 120% more. I mean, just the cost of like the parts would be like $120 plus shipping and everything else so it's crazy uh but yeah that's why these parts are from china but they're good quality parts i mean if i bought them from a u.s supplier it's the exact same part i know i've bought them from both and they are identical i mean let's see i can tell from the back here no that's from the same fact yeah yeah these are from two different lots here and they're just they're the same same manufacturer one i bought from a u.s supplier one from bought from china and i think the china one's got a little better printing on it go figure um but yeah uh that will be it for tonight i'm going to keep soldering away on these other keypads i got more keypads coming in on tuesday i was one short for some reason oh i know i'm one short because i used one in my prototype uh, so I got one keypad short, so that's coming Tuesday. So I'll get three these three wired up, and then next video I'll show you how all the how it all kind of goes together. So it's just a bunch of point to point wiring, nothing nothing complicated, but it's pretty neat though. Um, and it's true analog, and it works. And I sold way more than I thought I would. So thank you everyone, and that will be it for tonight. Thank you. Good night.